The blood gives God the legal right to forgive us. It's speaking for us from the mercy seat of heaven. But watch this. It's not just speaking there. It's also speaking in our hearts. Hebrews 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart. Draw near to God with a true heart. In full assurance of faith. Watch. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So watch. Watch, the blood, the sprinkled blood is not only speaking on the mercy seat of heaven in our behalf. It is also speaking, having been sprinkled in our hearts, watch this, to cleanse us from a defiled conscience. Because I want you to hear this. Most of people have voices in their conscience that are telling them how wicked and how unworthy they are and that God would never do nothing for them. But you got to understand, there is a blood of sprinkling that is speaking in our hearts and cleansing every evil and defiled conscience so that those voices, they want to fashion who you think you are. Those voices are silenced because of the sprinkled blood. You got to get this. If you're going to receive the anointing on top of the blood, you got to know what the blood is saying for you. Some of you, you put a smile on your face, but you live from a sense of being defiled. And God says, no more. My sprinkled blood is silencing those voices in your conscience that want to make you think you're unworthy when in fact you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is why the blood was applied and then the oil was put on. Real quickly, number two, you need to understand the blood is activated. How? 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Please hear this. That doesn't mean perfect living. That means honest living. Walking in the light is not perfect living. It's being honest about our mistakes, honest about our sins. It's, it's, it's walking in repentance. If I walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with each other, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. See, I'm telling you, every time we come and repent, we activate the speaking blood in our behalf. It's speaking for you. And, the, and, and by the way, this, in the verbiage of this scripture is that the blood of his son keeps on cleansing us. It's an ongoing work of, 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 of perfection and a maturity that goes on in our life so that we get freer and freer and freer and freer and freer and freer and freer because of that which the blood is saying for us. That's been my experience. I started off in this stuff when I was 12 years old. But the more I've walked with God, the more I've tried to walk in the light as he's in the light. His blood just keeps on cleansing me. Just keeps on cleansing me. Just keeps on cleansing me. The last thing I want to mention, the blood qualifies Hebrews 10, 1 through 5. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image can never with these same sacrifices, the sacrifice of bull of goats, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then, they would, they, uh, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? In other words, if, it, if the blood of bulls and goats had been able to accomplish the work, there wouldn't need to keep being sacrifices every year. It says, but for the worshipers once purified, watch, would have no more consciousness of sin. Did you know that God wants to remove the consciousness of sin from you and make you conscious of him? 
When Adam and Eve fell, they became conscious of sin. But before that, they were only conscious of God. Listen, he wants to remove it so far from us that we're not even conscious of it anymore. But in those sacrifices, because they had to do it every year, there's a reminder of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away the sin. It was impossible for those sacrifices. All it did was, was hold judgment off year by year until the perfect sacrifice of Jesus came. Now watch, Colossians 1.12, last scripture. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So in other words, as I'm walking in the light, I am qualified. I am completely qualified. How? By virtue of what the blood is saying about me. His blood is speaking for me. As I walk in the light, all sins are being cleansed away, and his blood is speaking for me. What's it? The blood is the blood. What now? Now I am ready to receive the anointing and the mantling of God. This will help you. So I want you to see this. In Hebrews 7, verse 8, where that the writer of Hebrews is making the case that we're no longer longer under the Levitical priesthood, but now we're under the Melchizedek order. How many of you know we have a high priest whose name is Jesus, who is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek? Because he wouldn't have been a priest under the Levitical order. Do you know why? Because he wasn't, he wasn't from the Levitical tribe. He was from the tribe of Judah. So, so literally, God made him a priest with a, with a vow and with an oath that he was made a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so that is what's being said. So I want you to see here Hebrews 7 verse 8. It says, hear mortal men, and he's talking about the Levitical priesthood, that every 70 plus years or thereabouts, the priests would die and another priest would take their place. They were mortal men. They were men that would die. So he says, here, mortal men uh, receive tithes. The people would come and they would honor the Levitical priesthood with their tithe. So they received the tithes from the people. It says, but there, everybody say there. there. He receives them. Jesus, who is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, he receives them, watch this, of whom it is witnessed that he lives. That word witnessed means to give judicial testimony. So every, watch this. Every time you bring your tithe, you are releasing testimony into the courts of heaven that is speaking in your behalf and causing God to remember you.